Okay, the important lesson here is that loops follow the tempo changes. It doesn't matter if this if it's an audio loop or if it's a MIDI loop. MIDI MIDI follows the tempo no matter what anyway, but loops, no matter if they're audio or MIDI, they'll follow the tempo. Here's the MIDI loop. Okay. The difference between loops and audio and and video is that audio and video do not follow the tempo. Let me pull in here a little MP3. This is an audio uh, of something I've worked on before, and you'll notice that the tempo does not change. We start from the beginning. Okay, so the tempo is not changing, it's not affecting these, this audio at all. Now, let me show you the same phenomenon that we, that we worked on before. Um, I'm going to move this tempo down, and you're going to see how this audio has been affected. Okay, this thing, if you notice, it got really short. I'm going to put it back up. Now it got really long. It's the same thing with this real-time. Real-time... Uh, audio and video follow real time, so that's why when you short, when you make the tempo slower, it's going to shorten because the playhead's moving slower, so it's going to move through the audio slower. When you make the tempo faster, the audio is going to stretch itself because the playhead is able to move through the audio faster. Okay, one more thing. Um, about audio, uh, you can use you can use um, crossfades, crossfading uh, from silence to getting louder and getting softer, but they need to be AIFs so and they need to be uncompressed files. Um, if, let me pull in an uncompressed file. Okay, let me get rid of get some more room here. Now, let me solo this. Attention. Okay, that's what it sounds like. Notice, you see these two rings up here? Uh, that means stereo. If it's two, if it's one, it's just mono. If it's just two rings, it's it's an uncompressed file. If it's these two rings with two lines on the top and bottom, that is a compressed file. So you need to have an uncompressed file. Now all you got to do is go here to your secondary tool, click on crossfade, and you'll get, whenever you press command, you'll get the crossfade tool. Now you just click and drag and you get that blue thing and it will make a crossfade for you. And this is what it sounds like now. Attention. Let me try it a little more. Attention. Try this. Attention. Attention. So you see how it fades in and fades out. If you press Control Shift, that will control the shape of it, and you can control what it what the shape is a little bit a little bit better. Attention. Okay, so those are crossfades. Um, let's pull up a movie now. If you want to, if you want to record music to a movie, this is very very useful. You go to m options, then movie open movie find the movie that you want and now it will show up here you can move this thing around you can make it smaller um, and just this will play with your audio get rid of this so wherever this cursor this playhead is at that's where the video is at. Um, this comes in very, very handy. This is really, really great. Um, if you click on this, you can turn up the original volume. But especially since I don't want to work with the original volume, I'm going to turn that down, turn that off. Um, but as you can see, I can record, you know, say I want to make my own song. make my song using this method. It's 
it's really great. Um, if you press uh, Option G again, now open up the video, and you get this. Now this shows you a little snapshot of the actual video. Let me let me get rid of the other ones, except for Temple. This shows you a little sh a little snapshot of the whole movie. Uh, all the way to the end and I never use this function because it really slows down the computer uh, but I just want to show this to you to show a point that the that the movie doesn't change itself everything around it actually changes okay um, all right now here's the tempo I'm gonna I'm gonna make the tempo lower and I'll watch now that the movie just got shorter. The movie actually didn't get shorter, it's just that the stuff around it got uh, shrunk down. So that's a good example of, of what we're talking about. Okay, uh, if you want to make more room, um, you can press I, and that will get rid of this, this side window, the, the inspector, or you can double click on this, and that will make a little bit more room. Um, Okay, let's see. Um, explain a little bit more. Uh, this thing on the right will show you how much how much computer space you're using. I have there's eight cores on this computer, which is quite a bit. But uh, when you're using the very nice East West samples, the orchestral library, it's that's what you really need for for that stuff because that stuff is is quite quite a computer eater um, and then this stuff is a locator these are region markers um, if you click up in here you get this green thing you can move it around all this does is loop the music so if I press spacebar press spacebar twice it loops that and it no matter where I try and move this thing it's gonna go back Uh, this is can be useful when you're working when you just want to loop a section, or you just want to um, work on you know some certain beat for a certain section. Um, if you also want to e export uh, just a certain region, just a certain area, that or even you know whether it's music or it's music with a movie, that is what I use. It's perfect for that. Um, also, there's something called. Um, moving or what's it called it's it's where you can change the actual you can actually change the audio and make it shorter or longer so let's say we got this audio we want to make it longer this is what it sounds right now if you go to audio oops you got to click on this click on the the audio region you want to change go to audio adjust region length to locators uh, this will think about it, convert it. Sometimes it takes a little a bit of time, but it will stretch it to those green markers. Now let's now let's take a listen. That's actually a little bit slower. Let me try and go the reverse. Let's see. You see how it actually changed the audio. Um, it it does quite a, a good job trying not to change the pitch, uh, you know. But obviously, when you're doing an extreme example, when you're changing it f uh, quite a bit, it it you know, it's hard not to have it sound kind of funny. But when it's not too much, um, it's it's quite a nice nice thing. Um, there's one more thing called beat mapping. Uh, let me just record something real quick. Oh, this is called, this is a loop. I don't know how that got turned on, but if I look at the inspector, I can click this to unloop it. When it's like that, it's it's ready to loop. 
or I can press L or I can press or I click and drag this now loop it okay uh, if I open up let me get rid of the video because that takes a lot of computer juice um, let's say I'm going along and I I want the computer to listen to my tempo and to follow my tempo um, I get this beat mapping um, all I do is I click and oh sorry um, what I what I do here is I say okay on this mark this is beat one I want the computer to recognize this where I put this yellow mark as beat one I want the computer to recognize this beat two right here so I click it and I drag it to where I want it and say I want this beat to be where I click and drag this yellow thing so I click and drag that to the yellow to write the start of that note and I just do that etc etc and the tempo changes my playing doesn't change but the tempo changes and and what the what logic thinks the tempo is is what changes so the neat thing about that is you know my cha my tempo doesn't change at all but but I can um, I can apply a loop and the loop will follow the changes that I have decided because logic now can follow me perfectly in, in all the tempo changes that I want or if I really want to change my tempo I was like okay I didn't play that right I can then go in and be okay in that section that tempo should have gone faster or slower or whatever um, so that's a really really nice feature okay let's say I got my song um, um, oh. I like my song and now I want to export this to make my movie so all I do is I go to options movie export audio to movie press ok these are the audio settings I say my movie put it on the desktop now when I get this screen if this is highlighted it's going to play the original audio along with my audio and I don't want that I just want my audio to be played so I unclick it so it's not highlighted then I press ok and then it's going to bounce all of it bouncing is the same thing as exporting it's going to export el everything um, and then it will appear on the desktop and here it is on the desktop and there's my music okay um, one more thing if I want to remove the the movie go here and remove movie um, if I just want to import a movie uh, I can just simply so here's a file right here I just click and drag it in here and then what, what will happen is it will ask me eventually do I want to open the movie and extract the audio or just extract the audio or just open the movie? I can do either one. I will do both so you see what it's like. So it opens the movie just like before and it also gives me an audio file on this track of the movie. Um, now so that means I have two options to get the audio, the original audio. I can get it from here, or I can get it from here. Now the nice thing about this is that I can delete, I can lower this, and then I can mute this, or if there are things that I want in this original audio, I can not mute it. I can mute, you know, mute a section and then have have uh, whatever audio I want to play through come through. So that's kind of the, ni the nice thing about that. Okay, so though we've got over the loops and audio and and uh, and movies, so now we know how to make how to how to combine our musical uh, thoughts into into video. Okay, now the last thing we're going to go through is um, is volume and volume automation.